We're here today with Pastor Russell Evans. Great to have you with us. Thank you. It's a real honor just to, I guess, sit and have this conversation today uh, because your church and even before Planet Shakers Church uh, as a youth ministry in Adelaide, yeah. uh, you've been able to affect uh, millions of people around the world and see so many great leaders raised up. And uh, it'd be great to talk a little bit about the culture that your church has. Because yeah. uh, I know for myself, being in the same city as yeah. Planet Shakers, you can see someone from your church and straight away identify they go to Planet Shakers because they carry a culture yeah. that you've established. Can you tell us a little bit about how you've established that culture, what it looks like, and I guess some keys that you'd suggest to youth pastors to establish a culture in their church? Yeah, cool. Um, I think number one, you've got to discover who you are right, and what God's called you to do. So with Planet Shakers, I went on a journey to discover you know, what, how God has made me and how that lines up with the kingdom. So within Planet Shakers, what happens is if somebody comes in, they uh, come and encounter God, then through that they go through what we call a DNA course, which teaches the kingdom cultures of Planet Shakers that line up with the Word of God. So we'll teach them we are praisers and teach them what, why behind the what. A lot of time we ask people to do something that we don't explain why the Bible says to do something. Yeah. We're evangelists, uh, we're evangelists, we're a church of first, things that are never done before um, God wants to do through people. And so it's that impartation and what I try to do is I try to impart it as much as I can because impartation comes, the closer you come from the original, uh, the more authentic it is in, in impartation. So we will take people through a, a course called DNA that will teach them the culture of the church, but then we'll finish it with an encounter because yeah. it's in the encounters that you have with God that literally um, bring transformation. And keep reinforcing culture all the time. You know, um, I'll be in a youth service, I'll be in a service and the church is a bit quiet and God will be saying, come on, we need a shout. So come on, we're here, we believe what the Bible says, shout you know, unto God with a voice of triumph and, and come on, let's shout and just reinforce what God is saying yeah. to us. And I think what happens is we tell people a story um, or tell them a principle and we tell them once and we think they're going to get it. And we've got to continue to reinforce what, what we are. We are planet shakers. This is what this means. It means that we, we are generous. We are, we are um, inviting people. And so it needs to become part of their life, um, not just something they do, it's something they are. Yeah. Um, and that's why the encounter is important because the encounter deals with the heart. Everything about culture is heart attitude. So if my heart's good, I'll want to change and be like what God is teaching us to become like. Um, if my heart's not good, no matter what I've been told, the process of what I receive, um, how I'll receive it is... So, for example, if I have an angry heart, I'll perceive everything through anger. Mm. And so I think our job as leaders is to create an environment for the soil around the seeds that we put in to be um, fresh, to yep. be uh, soft. And so continually dealing with the heart, because I think that's the key to create a strong culture within a family, within a workplace, within a church, is constantly dealing with heart conditions and then reinforcing truth. So yep. that's what we try to do. That's great. And, and so practically, let's break it down yeah. a little bit, because I think there's some, some gold in that. Uh, for youth pastors though, maybe they've um, moved into a church or uh, talking with their senior pastor, they've got a vision of where they want to take things. Yeah. Um, they want to take the culture that they've got and say, for example, they want there to be more agreement in preaching yeah. or, or more um, engagement in praise and worship or, yeah. or all of those things. Um, you're dealing with the heart, but practically, yeah. well, how do you get people to activate when, when they might not have seen what you've seen? Yeah. Or, or Does that make sense? Yes, totally. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. I, when I was a youth pastor, and I say this to young youth pastors all the time, you want people to be energetic in praise, mm -hmm. Will you be energetic in praise? Totally. You want people to agree with you in preaching? You model it to people. So when someone else preaches, you know, it's funny. I have um, now live video links across our campuses. And so I'll preach, and but I'll say in the service, if they're watching me on a screen, it's not about me hearing their agreement. It's actually, there's a spiritual dynamic to agreement and spoken agreement. Um, God spoke the word world into existence. He just didn't think it. 
and so I'll talk about the power of agreement that spoken word. So they'll see me on a screen and they'll say amen or cheer or whatever. And, it, and it's not like I'm hearing it, but it's actually building a culture or an atmosphere of agreement in that place. And, um, and how I demonstrated this was in our main campus, because I wanted to teach them that I don't have to be there in the flesh. So I preached in one of the morning services, and then in the evening, two afternoon services, I sat and watched my, myself preach on the screen and would say, amen, and I'd stand up and cheer to good points. And so I demonstrated what I actually wanted them to do. So you can't ask somebody to do something that they can't see. Yeah. Or I'll put them in an environment that is doing what I'm wanting them to see that, so that they can experience it. So then they get caught up in that and, and learn from that. And so when you explain it to them, they're like, oh yeah, like that event or like that experience. And when they see it in demonstration, it makes it way more easier. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, if you could leave youth pastors with one thing that you'd challenge them with or encourage them with, what would it be? Let us know. Okay. Cool. I want to uh, encourage and challenge you. Uh, I teach people this everywhere. How you see revival, how you see God move is two things, really. Loving God with all your heart and obeying Him. Everything I've ever done in Planet Shakers hasn't been because I've been more talented than anyone, hasn't because I've been more musically gifted than anyone. Really what it is, is because I've learnt to hear God and when God says do something, I've, I've done it. It doesn't mean that I feel comfortable doing it because sometimes you're scared when God tells you to step out and do something that you've never done before. That's a, I call it a happy scared. You feel this happiness, this joy, but this also, oh, I'm scared to death. You know, when I planted a church, I was happy, but I was like, well, what's going to happen? And But it's out of my obedience that I release the kingdom of God. And so listen to God, listen to what he says, get rid of the distractions that try to rob your faith and get in an environment that will build your faith. And then as God speaks to you, take a step of faith. And it doesn't have to be a big step. It starts with a small step and then a next step, then a next step. And before long, you know, like when I ran a youth group, I had 50 people and I was believing for 75. So I'd put out 75 chairs. I didn't put out 300 because I didn't have the faith for 300 but I could believe for 75. I heard God say, I can do this. So I'd do one step. And then when we got 75, I said, I could believe for 100. And I'd constantly listen to what God says. Sometimes I'd get 70 and I'd go, God, and I'd get in his presence and he'd say, come on, do it again. And I'd go out and put out 100 chairs and God, and eventually we would meet that. And then we went to 150 and continue to grow that way. Just, just obey him in the, in the small steps and he'll blow your mind to what he will do. I, I started a conference with 300 people, now it touches millions of people. And it's not because of me, it's because I just said yes to God and God wants to do the same with you. God bless you. So good, thank you so much. Hey, we just wanna honor you. Youth yeah. pastors, let's go after it. Create culture in your youth ministry. Find out what your senior pastor wants. Get a vision from God. And uh, sometimes that means you start, you're the man standing alone, dancing by yourself. But after time, people come and follow, they join, and uh, God will do something great in your youth ministry. Thanks so much for your time today. Just uh, just at the end right now, uh, just let us know a little bit about your conference, what's coming up. Sure. We'd love to hear about it. Well, it's our 20th year anniversary coming up um, in 2017. 20 years Planet Shakers Conference has begun, which is crazy. And uh, we, it's just going to be some of the greatest preachers in the world. There's going to be a lot of big surprises, big celebration. It's in Melbourne. It's in April, the week before Easter, the Monday to the Thursday. And uh, it, there's a youth uh, segment to it. And then there's a, a young adult segment. And it's just going to be absolutely incredible. 20 years, 20,000 people and $20. That's all it costs to come. God bless you. Awesome. Thanks. We'd love to see testimonies. Hit us up on our Contact Us page. See you later.